Hey friends, Deanna here with Homestead and Chill and happy fall. And what a beautiful fall day it is out here today too. We are long overdue for a garden tour and update. So I figured today we could walk around and see what we have growing. Um, and hopefully I'll drop some interesting or helpful tidbits along the way. So right now we have a lot of leafy greens and lettuce, brassicas like cabbage and kale, um, kohlrabi, fun stuff like that. And even a few fall flowers going. So we are very fortunate in our temperate climate here to be able to garden virtually year round. We will get a few light frost which we can combat with frost cover over our most sensitive plants but otherwise we really don't get a lot of hard freezes and so to give you a better sense of time right now it is the first week of November we started out all of these guys from seed the last week in August and then transplanted them out just a month ago in the first week of October so these guys have only been outside for about a month so the plants are still pretty young um, they'll get a lot bigger with time I'll hopefully do another winter garden tour um, in a couple months so you guys can see it then and then just keep in mind that the timing varies a lot for your zone and your climate uh, but I do have garden planning calendars that show you when to start seeds transplant out or direct sow seeds directly outside for every single zone so if you don't have that yet um, I'll put a link in the caption so you can get the planting calendar for your zone in general fall is one of my favorite times to grow food but I am particularly excited about this growing season because it's our first fall garden in our new garden space so if you guys recall it was exactly this time last year last November that we were just laying gravel in this whole space so we didn't get the beds built and filled and installed until February of this year so again very excited to have our first fall garden out here and if you're interested and you missed it we did do a tutorial on how we built our raised beds as well as the drip irrigation system we installed for all of these so I'll also add a link for that for you guys if you're curious. All right so I thought today we would start by walking through kind of the existing center garden there but mark my words we will go see the chickens um, before we finish up today because a lot of times I forget to go say hi to them. I can see them over there. Hi girls! Um, I forget to go see them when we do these little walk arounds and tours. So coming in through this way we just did kind of a little bit of a fall cleanup and did some pruning and deadheading, um, especially in the existing raised garden beds down here. So these raised beds were already in place when we moved to this property, um, but we planted them out and converted them. They were using them, you know, more like um, rotational veggies and things. We did perennial herbs and blueberries and strawberries in them. and. This stuff is all growing in really nicely too. So just yesterday I came in and did a big cleanup of the herb bed. They were all really overgrown and had all their spent flowers from summer. Um, so in here, it's just filled in so nice. We have quite a few different varieties of oregano and thyme and sage. And there's a little chamomile in here. Um, and yeah, some lemon verbena. And that's lemongrass beyond it and a Meyer lemon. So lots of lemon right there. And then these um, blueberries and strawberries are kind of just fairly dormant right now, hanging out. And then we had some um, calendula that's now gone in that front bed, but there's still some chamomile hanging out there. And then coming down the path here. Again, there are little plants that we added, kind of filling in. And then as far as the orchard goes, um, hi little birdie, sorry, didn't mean to startle. Um, the orchard doesn't have a whole lot going on right now because it's, you know, it's fall. So, oh, he's in his bath. I don't mean to disrupt, um, but you can see a lot of the um, trees just kind of have fall color, especially this little peach tree here and are just kind of losing leaves, except the, the apricot still has a ton of leaves on it up here. Um, but a lot of the other ones are kind of getting a little naked. Uh, and then, I don't know if you've seen our other videos, but you're probably used to seeing all of this stuff be a lot more brown. It was so nice. We had a really amazing early um, rain in October where we got like four inches of rain over just a nice steady rain over like 24 hours and it just greened up everything so much earlier than usual. Uh, usually we don't get um, you know this kind of green until like December. So that's been really nice this fall to kind of have that, that extra verdant look out here. But yeah so the trees are just again kind of doing their fall thing over here. Um, nectarines and peaches and these are a couple of the apples that we had added there's the fuji and she's looking good and tall and then um 
This is the Pink Lady, which we had topped. It was like a super tall, skinny little whip of a tree. Um, and we had topped it down and it just made it really get this nice like candelabra shape um, and just really shape up nicely. You can see where we cut it right there. Um, and it didn't have any of this top growth, so it's really just bushed out really nicely. So that worked well. And along the fence, there's lemon guava, and they have a ton of little fruit, but these plants are so young, I don't expect these to ripen up very well um, this year. Actually, some of this looks like it got, I don't know if that's from frost or what happened there, um, but again, it's young, so I'm not really expecting it to hold a lot of its fruit yet, and it's really interesting. We grew lemon guava like this at our last homestead. Um, there's another one over here, but it had much larger fruit, and so I don't know if they're going to stay this tiny or if they're going to eventually get a little bigger. They were more like when they were a nice size um, before, so I hope they're bigger because I liked them like that. They're a little less seedy that way. And then along this side, um, again, a pretty dormant looking few persimmon and some citrus. All these wine barrels had um, hemp plants in them over the summer, so those have come and gone. We have our fig tree there. And this is an existing little lime tree that has never given us fruit yet. So we'll see if we actually get some fruit off of this thing eventually. Um, and then you can also see that the um, grapevines are getting a lot of nice fall color themselves. We had so many grapes this summer off of these vines. It was amazing. We made some jam and some preserves. Um, but yeah, just just a lot of fresh eating too of those grapes. Um, so we'll be trimming those back pretty hard, um, probably in about a month. And I think this year I want to save some of the long pieces and actually make like a wreath out of the um, old grapevines. All right, now coming in here to the main garden. We have to take a peek at this beautiful corner first though. This little corner <laughs> just brings me so much joy. It is so pretty and filled in so nice. So the yellow is a California native, um, California sun drops. And then there is some lantana and some lavender and pincushion. We've got our little pollinator habitat sign up there. Um, but I just love how pretty that looks just spilling over. And now the veggies. So with the veggie bed too, um, I kind of skipped over a little bit and I guess I should back up and mention kind of what the transition is like for us from, you know, our full summer garden and to these fall crops. So we do admittedly end up clearing a few of our summer things before maybe we would be ready to otherwise. Um, for example, like tomatoes, uh, we definitely still had really prolific tomato vines and actually removed them earlier than maybe some folks would in order to get all this fall stuff in on a timely manner because if we wait too late and we are fighting against sunlight and cooler nights and things like that then this stuff would have all gotten a really slow start and again because we love our fall garden so much um, we do end up kind of sacrificing that tail end of the summer season in order to get this stuff out on time um, where other people you know might have just kind of let those go uh, so once we transplant all these little guys out as seedlings too. We do cover them um, with hoops and row covers with like insect netting because the birds tend to go after our tender leafy green seedlings especially. And so um, having that uh, covered when they're still really small protects them and then we take off the cover once they get to a little bit of a bigger established size like this. I will kind of briefly go over what, what's growing, but I won't point out every single thing that we see here um, that's planted. But here we have some Swiss chard and peppermint Swiss chard is our favorite. I think I showed you guys that before in the past. Um, you can see we have some really big, thick bok choy going on in here, which is, whoops, really nice. Um, yeah, that's a really pretty one. I think this is the prize choy variety. And then we usually grow a lot of joy choy. And then on the other end of the bed down here, we have some red kale and then leeks are planted down there with a little pop of marigold. And then this is a big old crazy zinnia that's still here from the summer. It has multiple stakes holding it up. And then lettuce bed. So a few different varieties of lettuces. We try to choose kind of the, again, heat tolerant, slow bolting varieties. And we do practice 
perpetual harvesting or cut and come again from these guys as well, where we would just take a couple of the outermost leaves, you know, pulling from down here on the bottom of the plant, um, you know, a few leaves a week off of every plant or every few days, and they'll just continue to grow more and more new um, greens from the middle rather than taking the whole head so we can eat off of the same one plant for a long time that way rather than cutting it all out and that is the same story for pretty much all these leafy greens like these bok choy these are all the joy choy our favorite favorite bok choy big meaty leaves rather than like the little baby baby bok choy again these plants are all still pretty small too um, since they've only been out here since transplanting only like a month ago from seedlings and some more Asian greens, different little marigolds and things. Okay, and then in these beds, this is like Brassica Alley. <laughs> so here um, is all of our cabbages. So we have four different varieties of cabbage in here. One I'm really excited about, it's called Megaton. They get massive, so that's like a new to us. They're gonna be a huge cabbage. Um, but we have four different rows, four different varieties of cabbage. Might be a little tightly spaced, but we'll see. We'll see how that'll go. And then another really pretty variety called, um, I think you call it Dead On, but it's more like this like sage green and purple. Um, so I will definitely come back and do a winter tour with all of this stuff once we have cabbages heading up and once we have broccoli and cauliflower heading up so you can see all these plants once they're um, more mature. And then this is all broccoli and cauliflower. Two rows of broccoli on this side, two rows of cauliflower on this side. We always grow a few fun varieties of cauliflower too, like lavender colored or the cheddar, um, like yellow ones. And then all of these are, um, Brussels sprouts. So we have only grown Brussels sprouts one befo once before in our last homestead and they were so much fun and actually did really well for us. Um, so we're doing a whole bed of them, two different varieties, really excited about that. Come over on this side. Been leaving these, this poor plant <laughs> is on its last leg, but the monarchs just love it. Um, and there still are some kind of flitting around right now. So been leaving that for the pollinators. Yeah, so that's all the Brussels. And then down this way, to give you a little context, you can kind of start to see the sun creeping in, but this is south. Um, and so as the, uh, you know, winter goes on and the sun gets lower in the horizon on the south, these three beds end up getting quite a bit of shade um, to where by like, I think it was like January, I tried to observe last winter, kind of backing up before we, um, we knew this was gonna be our garden space, but we didn't know exactly where all the beds were gonna be until we observed for an entire, like almost year season of where the good sun exposure was gonna be. So last winter I was keeping my eye back here. Um, and that's why we didn't push beds um, like all the way back to the fence. I was seeing how much shade this whole corner really did get. So we planted kind of lower priority crops in these beds this year. Um, you can see we still have cucumbers hanging off the end over here, which are a haggard mess and need to go, but they've actually still been producing a little bit of fruit. It got down to 40-ish last night, so now they're really not looking happy. Um, but there's like, there's still a cucumber. So <laughs> we'll probably pull those soon. Um, but since they weren't really taking up any, any space here, Besides the very end there, we left the cucumbers, but those gotta go. But anyway, so this is fava beans, um, which are a great cover crop. They're edible. Um, the, the greens are edible. The beans, the pods are edible. Um, really delicious. And we like eating them, but they're also um, a really good nitrogen fixer. And so they will enrich the soil. And so we didn't want to put like our prize leafy greens that we want to last here, um, you know, through late winter because this will be in pretty deep shade. So we're just doing some cover crops in that bed. And then similar story in here, we planted green means that we know won't last as long, that are more um, heat intolerant or don't seem to last for months like some of our other greens, um, and some arugula down in this end. And it looks a little sad too. Come this way. It looks a little sad too because something's been getting into this bed. I don't know if it's a raccoon or what it is, um, but something's been digging around and like eating this, their spinach in here too. Eating the spinach. Um, it doesn't like the arugula as much. Um, so that bed isn't looking as prolific as the others. And in the other back corner, Something that will come and go quickly again because of the shade is radishes and turnips and beets. Look at all of these. I actually need to pick. There's like some big ones. Look at this. How pretty. So this is a pink beauty radish. Um, I'm gonna set it down and I will come back. <laughs> come back for you. But you can see all these little 
pretty pink radishes. And so I plan that too, thinking about the sun. It's gonna get shadier from this way over. So I did the fastest 30 day type radishes here, and then the slightly larger daikon radishes here. And then there are some turnips and beets mixed into this end. I'm um, tucked behind these leeks, which are pretty much mature-ish. Um, we've been harvesting off and on the biggest ones. So we took a few the other day and then just as needed, we've been kind of perpetually harvesting off of that little area of leeks. And we can't forget about our, <laughs> our bolted um, flowering agave here. The plant is pretty much dead. Um, and so we've just been kind of leaving it because we haven't wanted to deal with doing anything with it. So it's done flowering and it's just hanging out. And this is super hard. I've heard one cool thing is that people will um, harvest those and use them as like walking sticks, which is actually pretty darn straight. So um, if we can cut it, maybe we'll try to do something fun like that with it. Uh, and then back here, not a whole lot going on in the border except, ooh, I actually should show you. This is really pretty. This is a bottle brush, a little John bottle brush over here. And the flowers, they're kind of fading here, but look how pretty the flowers are. Uh, so this was one of Aaron's choices. Yeah, the flowers are kind of fading. This was one of Aaron's choices for this area. There's three of them throughout this whole back um, perennial border. And they just flowered for the first time. So that's exciting. And then other salvias and lavenders and a few little dwarf olive trees. Um, this is status with the purple flowers there. Yarrow, all kinds of fun stuff. Artichokes. The artichokes came and went. Um, you probably saw in our summer video, we had some really nice artichoke harvest. I cut those completely down to the ground, um, I don't know, maybe a month or two ago, and they already just totally grew back. So they're just gonna be really prolific. I need to probably thin them out a little bit too because there's like clusters of them. Um, but on either side with the artichokes, we have snow peas. And I've grown a lot of snap peas, but not as many snow peas. So this is kind of a newer experiment. I have two different varieties, one on either side of the arch. Um, so that will be fun to have those this winter. And hopefully they'll grow up and fill up a good, good little amount of this trellis. And coming through here, just love that view. Got a few little mums to make it festive with our little squash on the table. So this big red zinnia is left over from sun, summer. It's just spilling out. So we're just leaving it because it's just too pretty. And over here, we have more bok choy, um, some Swiss chard at the end. And then in the back right here are some um, Napa cabbages. They're actually starting to already form like a little bit of a conical head. Um, so that'll be fun. So that's Napa cabbage there. And we have um, snap peas uh, down along there. And then over on this side, Sorry, it's going to be a little loud right next to the fountain, I think, because I just cleaned it yesterday. So it is kicking. It has lots of vigor right now. Um, okay, but here is uh, mostly, what do we got here? We have mostly cauliflower and some Romanesco. So if you've seen Romanesco, it's like the really cool um, conical, like, vibrant green it's like a pseudo cross between broccoli and cauliflower but like very cool like a fractal shape i don't know i'll put a picture on here in case you haven't seen it very cool um so there is romanesco and cauliflower there and more swiss chard and a couple little cabbages and then la Cienado kale but the dazzling blue variety that we love it has those nice purple veins in there and I think you probably saw the big kale trees that we had in the summer that were back there that's the same variety so these are going to turn into big old honking kale trees too um, and I put them on this side again thinking about shade that's one thing we plan especially in our winter gardens um, is you know if it was too tall of a, a plant over here it's going to cast shade all the way back here so since the sun is that direction I'm putting the taller stuff like kale kind of in the back Here we have a whole bed of onions that was just tra transplanted out fairly recently. Um, so they're just now kind of sizing up, but at the end of their bed, something kind of fun. Oh, I can see I'm pretty decent from here, but kohlrabi. So there's kind of a more white green variety of kohlrabi. And then we have some, some purple ones too. 
such neat little things. So they'll get um, like baseball size. Actually, one of the varieties gets like softball size. It's massive. If you haven't had kohlrabi before, it is like, um, it's a brassica. And the, the bulb is kind of like a really sweet inner portion of a broccoli stem, but like crossed with like an apple. Like it's crisp and juicy, but it kind of has like that broccoli-esque flavor, um, but better. Yeah, it's kind of hard to explain, but they're really fun. And last time I was out here with you guys, these were the two um, big tomato beds that had those big, tall tomato trellises in them. That was kind of a new to us um, experiment for that year, and it worked so well. Like it was such a successful, um, not only tomato season, but I just love the style of that trellis. I'll clip in a little video here um, so you guys can actually see what it looked like once they fully filled out those trellises. Um, I've already briefly explained that system in one of our tomato trellising, um, like written blog post, but I will go back and I think this spring when we reassemble the tomato trellis, I will go ahead and um, make a YouTube video for you guys on how to set up that same system because it was just so wonderful. Um, it deserves a little bit more of a thorough explanation. Um, so you can do that as well if you would like to. Here we have mostly just flowers left over from summer with, I did direct sow recently, carrots and beets and they're just kind of slowly coming along. You can see there's like my shadow's not in the way. There are some little sprouts, but they are growing pretty slow. Um, maybe we'll get a good crop, but um, I don't know why they're growing much slower. I'm thinking because this bed is really shaded by um, early afternoon too. So, and then over here is kind of our overflow brassica bed where we had a few leftover cauliflower and then more broccoli. And I think a few of these were more like a sprouting broccoli variety. So rather than the one big head, they're more um, known to give multiple smaller like side shoots. And so those will be fun to keep an eye on. Tried a few different new varieties. We had more room than ever to experiment this year. And then to the final couple beds back here, we just have some calendula and some zinnias hanging there. And then our butternut squash, which is still kicking. We already harvested, Aaron weighed like 40 pounds of butternut squash off of two vines. We were so impressed with how well these did. And you can see over here, they're really, really dying back quite a bit. And they're getting powdery mildew. And I probably, um, you know, I don't want the mildew to spread, but they're gonna have to go fairly soon, but they're just finishing up. They're kind of like second flush of fruits. You can see these really, ah! There are black widows around here and I just reached behind it and felt something sticky. It probably wasn't, um, but I should probably watch where I'm looking. I mean, where I'm grabbing. Um, I found a black widow behind one the other day. Um, but anyway, so nice butternut squash and there are so many more still on the vine coming. So this, these two vines gave us like three rounds of fruit. You can see this is like the youngest. It's still pretty green. And then this, I think, was the second round. And then the first round we already harvested. Uh, but they're turning, you know, that nice tan color. This is a really big one. Look how fat this one is. Um, but they're turning that nice tan color. And we want to wait and leave them on the vine as long as possible. We don't want them to frost out here, which we don't really have frost yet. It's only early November. Um, so they're going to be fine. But you want them to turn, you know, as dark as tan as possible. When you poke them with your thumbnail, it shouldn't um, easily puncture the skin. So we're waiting for the skin to really firm up. And the top of the stem, you'll see, starts to really get a nice deep brown. Um, and they'll get sweeter and just better flavor the longer you leave them on. And even if it starts to get nice and cool at night. So again, it's been like kind of like 40, 41 overnight. So I think it's probably really um, sweetening, and ripening up those last few squash so that we can harvest them soon. Before we go back through there, I guess I'll give you a quick cruise down on this end. Not a lot going on. Um, we have some kind of sad looking turmeric and stuff and an even more sad story. If you're looking at this guy in the pot here, this was our dwarf weeping mulberry, which was over here and we made a boo-boo and we, uh, we got kind of lazy and we used like a flimsy um, pre-made gopher cage for it and the gopher got inside and ate it. And so I pulled it out. Um, I could tell it had like lost all of its leaves and it died way back. Um, so we put it in the pot. It does have like a little bit of a stump left and we're going to see if maybe it will um, regrow. We'll give it some mycorrhizae to help with root growth. Um, but yeah, I was able just to 
pop it right out of the ground because the gopher had gotten in from the bottom of the cage. I didn't see any gopher activity or mounds. As you can see, we have plenty of that around here. Um, and the, the tree just started like wilting basically. So I had a suspicion and sure enough, I just popped it right out. So usually we make our own durable ones out of hardware cloth and we use like this flimsy pre-made one because um, we were just like planting so much at once. I didn't have the energy to build my own. Um, but anyway, so everybody else is doing good though. We have a fig and a pomegranate. And then I wanted to show you, we have a couple nice pomegranates over here that are getting pretty big and gonna be ready to harvest soon. Like this one's just starting to split pretty ready you wait till they do split just a little bit like this one i need to harvest i just left it here to show you guys um, look at that isn't that beautiful so fun there's quite a few of them and this is a you know young tree so we will get even more of that this is kind of a newer shrub we planted back here too and of course i'm not going to be able to remember the name off the top of my head right now um but it has these really cool flowers um that the hummingbirds are obsessed with. They're always back here and it gets pretty big and bushy. So we just thought this would be a nice kind of like for this random corner, a nice shrub um, that will fill in and give the hummers some food. All right, so heading back through here. The quail are still around too, if anyone's invested in the story of the quail. They're around a lot. Um, they were just hanging out in our little border uh, last night with us and up on the fence. And then they have been sleeping up in, there's a group of trees um, kind of back there or behind the chicken coop, uh, sort of outside our bedroom window. And we hear them up there at night making all their cute little chirping noises and stuff. The covey is, I think at least like 24 birds last time I was able to get a good count. Um, so it seems like a lot of the babies that were here in uh, early summer survived and are hanging out and enjoying life. Okay, well, that's kind of what's going on in the garden proper right now. So like I said, a lot of this stuff is pretty young and just filling in. Just thought we'd look at our pollinator border over here really quick before we go say hi to the chickens. This is another California native the hummingbirds love. It is a California fuchsia. It kind of looks a little shaggy and like a little cousin it plant, um, but they really enjoy that. There's two of them. There's another one tucked in there amongst more, you know, yarrow and um, there's some agastache and different things. And our turmeric was a little sad this year and so was the ginger. I think we might even just leave the ginger and just like let it sprout again next spring. We'll see what happens. Um, yeah, I'm not 100% sure. We've always grown really great turmeric in the past, but I think this was also possibly a little bit too exposed sun-wise. Our previous homestead didn't have really full sun in any spot. And since these are right here in the blazing sun, I think it was maybe just a little bit too much for them. Um, so we might try a different spot. We have the couple barrels in the back corner that are a little bit more shaded, um, but we'll see. We'll still harvest. We might leave the ginger, but we'll still harvest the turmeric probably in like January once all the greens really die back and we'll see how much we get from it. All right, and now I want to pick a couple greens really quick that we'll go feed with the chickens together. I thought that'd be fun and they'll they'll definitely not argue about that. Um, so let's see what I can grab here with one hand. I'm gonna grab them a little chard and what can I get them? I'm gonna grab them one of these big greens. I'm just looking for whatever's biggest. One of these pretty greens and they're so funny they won't really eat red stuff as much um okay i think i need two hands but let me go grab a few more greens and then we'll go feed these to the chickens okay here's a nice little handful of greens that the girls will definitely be thankful for and let's go let's go visit them i just love this view from up here and i think I think they already see me with the greens. I think they're waiting. <laughs> they're waiting over there looking at us. Okay. Hi girls. You want some greens? Hi. Hi. There's a lot of feathers because it is a molting season, even though I already picked them up a lot. Hi. Hi birdies. You want to say hi to everybody? Hi Zoe. Hi Phoebe. 
Hi, Hennifer. Oh, okay. Let's wait. Let's come over here. Let's come over here. <gasps> Good girls. Away to a chicken's heart is through their crop. <laughs> oh, birds. Isn't that tasty? Isn't that tasty, Hennifer? Good girl. Good girls. Okay. You can do it yourself. <laughs> oh, well, that was a pretty short and sweet little tour today, guys. I'm gonna come back and lock that up for them when I have two hands. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for tuning in and hanging out. Uh, we always appreciate it and I hope you guys are doing really well um, and that things are good in your neck of the woods. And we'll see you next time.